Hi friends, welcome to my recap of Watchtower Study Oracle 9. Let's get right into it where Jehovah's Witnesses are going to learn how to imitate Jesus. Hmm. You're not going to believe this one. Here it is, imitate Jesus by serving others. It's taken from Acts 20, verse 35. There is more happiness in giving than there is in receiving. Notice the preview. In this article, we will consider ways in which we can imitate Jesus' example. We'll also consider how imitating Jesus' self-sacrificing attitude will bring us long-lasting benefits. That's a little too much for me. They're trying to imitate Jesus' self-sacrificing attitude. He sacrificed himself on the altar for the sins of mankind. What is ex Watchtower implying here? Let's just keep going, friends. See what they have to say. Paragraph one, long ago, the Bible foretold that God's people would offer themselves willingly, wow, in Jehovah's service under the direction of his son. What does that even mean? They cite Psalms 110.3, which says, I'm going to start with verse one. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. There is verse three in red, thy people shall be willing in the day of the power and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. Where does it say that Jehovah's Witnesses will offer themselves willingly in Jehovah's service? It's not there. There's the entire chapter. It's a short one. It's clearly about Christ. Clearly. We'll get a little more into this. But the, but the paragraph says, it goes to explain how Jehovah's Witnesses preach at their own expense, and they spend countless hours preparing meeting parts and shepherding fellow believers. In Matthew chapter 22, it says, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them saying, what do you think of the Christ? Whose son is he? They say to him, the son of David. He said to them, how then does David in spirit call him Lord saying, and he quotes from Psalms 110.3. Verse 44, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? This has nothing to do with Jehovah's Witnesses whatsoever, friends. They're Christians. It was prophesied in Isaiah 60 that the Gentiles would come to the light of Christ. Titus 2, in red, it says at the bottom, well, let's start at verse 13. It says, looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Lord Jesus, who gave himself for us, the Christians, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people. Revelation 19, it's the Christians who are clothed in fine linen, white and clean, because they've put their faith and trust in the one who died for them, to cleanse them of all iniquity, to cleanse them from their sins. So when Jesus comes back, it's the Christians who will return with him, not the governing body members, all right? I just want to show you a little more here. Notice in Revelation 19, 15 in red, it's that Jesus comes with a sharp sword, okay? Followed by the Christians clothed in fine linen, white and clean. But notice the Jesus of Watchtower. He has a cape, a bow and arrow, and a scepter. And he returns with, wing, with winged, bearded, and enraged governing body members. You see, this is in fulfillment of 2 Corinthians 11, friends, where it says that there will be another Jesus who was not preached. Watchtower preaches another Jesus, another Jesus who can't save. Scripture makes it very clear that Jesus will return and every eye shall see him. Watchtowers, Jesus returned invisibly. So now this article is going to go into how the Jehovah's Witnesses can imitate Christ's self-sacrificing spirit. Let me show you. Paragraph two in the box. Jesus set an outstanding example in putting the interests of others ahead of his own. Really? 
We are trying our best to follow his footsteps. Steps. All right. Romans 15, 1 through 3. There it is, but let me read to you verse 3 in bold. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Witnesses are trying to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, but they cite verses about his crucifixion, about his death about his dying for the people. I could see if they were citing scriptures about the love of Christ. But Romans 15, three talks about how he took on the sins of the world when he died. This is a little alarming to me. Paragraph three, in this article, we will review some of the sacrifices that Jesus made to serve others, and we'll consider how we can imitate his example. He died for them by taking on their sins, and they want to follow in his footsteps. Paragraph four. Jesus gave of himself even when he was tired. Notice in the box. He not only healed them, but also delivered one of the most motivating public discourses of all time, the Sermon on the Mount. All right, so they don't go into what Jesus did. He cast out unclean spirits. He, rose, he resurrected people. But they talk about how he did this while he was tired. And then they go into paragraph five, how family heads are imitating Jesus. This whole paragraph is about how a, a family head arrives home exhausted. He wants to cancel the firm family worship. So he begs Jehovah for strength and he ends up having the study and the children learn an important lesson that for their parents, spiritual things take priority over everything else. So that's one way of how family heads imitate Jesus. In the box, Jesus was generous with his personal time. Really? Can you imagine how Jesus felt when he learned that his friend John the baptizer had been beheaded? Seriously? We can understand why he wanted to be by himself. Paragraph seven in yellow, how loving elders imitate Jesus. We deeply appreciate the work that our self-sacrificing elders do in our behalf. Much of that work is unseen by the congregation in general. No kidding. Then it goes in to talk about the hospital liaison committee, you know, the elders who go to the bedside of the dying Jehovah's Witnesses to make sure that they don't take blood the ones who try to get them to sign over their rights to the elders to make the decisions, leaving the family members out. Paragraph eight in green, elders also share in construction of kingdom halls and other facilities. Like what? Paragraph nine, read Philippians two, four and five, which we will in a minute. Granted, not all of us are elders, but all of us can learn to imitate Jesus' self-sacrificing spirit. Friends, I just want to show you Hebrews 7, 27. He offered up himself. He sacrificed himself. That's what Jesus did. What is the self-sacrificing spirit thing all about? So here's Philippians 2, 4 through 8 talks about the humbleness of Jesus Christ to in verse six, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Verse six says he was equal with God, but verse seven made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, not slave, and was made in the likeness of men. Jesus Christ, who was equal to God, humbled himself, took on the form of man, a servant, the son of man, so that he could take on their sins. They can be wiped clean, having their robes washed in the blood of the lamb. That's what this is talking about. And witnesses are gonna imitate that. Shameful and it's blasphemous. Paragraph 10, under the subtitle, analyze your attitude in the pink box. Am I quick to offer my help when there is a need for volunteers to clean a convention site or to maintain the kingdom hall? All in the name of making personal sacrifices. Paragraph 11, pray earnestly to Jehovah. Paragraph 12 in the box, 
As the organization keeps growing in size, we need more young brothers to help us look after Jehovah's people. When I was in, the elders, they weren't young. Now they're moving to the young ones, like the next generation. Because the older ones, as the article says, uh, many of those ministerial servants are middle-aged or older. And now they're going to the young ones. What happened to the in-between? Where are they going to the young ones? That's been quite a topic lately about the youth. Paragraph 13, be alert to the needs of others. In the box. A sister falls asleep in death, leaving behind her grieving husband. Does our brother need help with meals, transportation, or household chores? Notice by the green arrow. By imitating Jesus' self-sacrificing attitude, elders set an example for young ones to follow. Really, like cleaning the chairs? That was what Jesus did. Let me show you something, Isaiah 52, about Jesus Christ. It says, as many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. Listen, when they were torturing Jesus, they pulled his beard out by the roots. They whipped him with the cat of nine tails, which is a, a whip with shards of bone on the end. Think of this, a full grown man with all his strength, whipping with the cat of nine tails, the shards of bone lodging in his flesh and then yanking it out with all of his might. They ripped his flesh off, they pulled his hair out. And this organization who has not been able to get one prophecy right in the last 150 years, tells their followers that cleaning the kingdom halls is imitating Jesus' self-sacrificing spirit. I'm offended. I'm offended by this. This is awful. All right. This article, thankfully, is about to be finished in the blue box on the left. Similarly, if we act on what we've learned through personal Bible study, doing our best to correct any flaws we may have, we can successfully follow the model that Jesus left for us. Wow. Paragraph 18, we live in a world that's dominated by selfishness, but Jehovah's people stand out as different. We've been touched by the self-sacrificing spirit of Jesus and we're determined to follow his example. Let's see them try. Look at the size of those nails. Look at the thorns. You see those thorns? They shoved that crown of thorn down on his head. They didn't just place it. He was a king and he was crowned, but they gave him a crown of thorns that just ripped, ripped the flesh on his head. Jehovah's Witnesses are going to imitate him. They can't even come close. They're on the wrong path. This organization is an evil organization, and you need to get out. If you're, if you're still in this organization, seriously give it consideration, friends. I understand what it's about being PMO. I get it. I get it. The, the, you risk so much because you'll lose everybody. But turn to Jesus Christ. Put your faith and trust in his death, burial, and resurrection so that you will be saved. He did the work for you. You don't have to clean the kingdom hall to be considered good. Jesus did the work for you. He will wash you clean in his own blood, friends. Do that today. All right? Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.